It's about time. Welcome everybody to QuickCast. My name is Jeremy Paul, also known as Sleepy Juice, and today we're going to be looking at a game submitted by Wyman. It's actually the second one we've done of his. So let's go ahead and get into QuickCast episode 7, and I'll see you inside the game. Alright, so here we go into the game. Today we're going to be looking at a TVP. It's going to be the Terran player Wyman versus the Blue Protoss CYC Lesang. Now, we're going to be doing this map, or this game on Belshir Vestige, uh, LE edition, so it's going to be the latter edition, obviously, because they're playing a latter game. Um, the basic thing is this is a two player map. It's going to have your natural directly outside your base, and then your third is going to be a little bit after that, and then the fourth is where it actually gets a little bit interesting, because you can take it past your third, or you can actually come up and be closer to your main and just uh, next to your main there, have a shorter air distance between them, have a little bit of protection from drops if you want to view things that way. Now, the middle of this map has two jag two towers in the, the middle for a vision of that middle ground. It has a destructible rock in the middle, so you can break through that also. But it has a lot of really wide open paths around the outside. Um, there are quite a few ramps in here also. In fact, right outside of the natural, between the natural and the third, there's a weird ramp that goes down and then back up again. You never want to get trapped in there. Um, just something kind of to keep in mind if you're ever playing on this map. Now, as far as quick casts, this is episode 7, and I just like every quick cast, what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to focus on a single concept for the game to kind of include lower players, uh, lower league players in the game, and new players. We want them to be able to get familiar with the game, familiar with the concept, things they can take, focus on one thing at a time, take that, put it in the practice in your games, and by all means, please send me a replay of you using the things we learned in the game in practice. And if you want to send me one from before you started doing it, that would be even better. Because then we can go ahead and compare and contrast. And I'll make an entire show out of that. You'll have an entire show based all around you and your replays. Now, we do have, for the Terran opening up, Wyman's going to... Wayman? <laughs> Wyman. That's how you pronounce it. I was I was instructed on that. So Wyman's going to be opening up with a Reaper. Meanwhile, we have the Protoss player um, with only two pylons so far in his base. So we'll see what he ends up doing there. Uh, the third pylon is usually the indicator of whether or not it's going to be an in-base play or if it's going to be some sort of proxy. Now, our... Uh, the probe's actually moving down there towards the bottom of the, the fourth base for the Terran, so we'll see what's going on. And it looks like he is planning a pylon there. We do have the expansion going down for the Terran player also. So we, here's the pylon. We'll see what he puts there. Um, it's not likely to be a, a warping pylon at this point. It's probably going to be a proxy at some point. We could be see a proxy uh, Stargate. We could see a proxy uh, CT or going for CT, but it is in fact a Stargate. So we're going to see either a Void Ray all in or an Oracle opening to an expand. Meanwhile, we do have the Reaper coming out and going out. Now, the concept we want to cover today for the quick cast is vision, so map vision in particular. And we're going to be looking at it from the angle of the Protoss because the Protoss in this game, from the quick scan I did, does a really good job of actually keeping map vision. He's very focused on keeping the watchtowers and he's focused on keeping active units on the map, just one or two moving in and out. He also does really well with putting pylons around the map and we have the Stargate finishing up here so we're going to see what the first unit is coming out of the Stargate. It'll be the first at real action we have because the Reaper came in for a poke, didn't really do anything but did get good scouting information, saw there was only two pylons there. Uh, we haven't really seen a huge reaction from uh, Wayman as far as the reaction to those two pylons and uh, whereas Lee, Lee Sang is about to have his Oracle out and going into the main. We don't see that many Marines either at this point. We only have two uh, coming out at the moment. And here comes the Oracle. The Oracle's gonna go in. It looks like it's wide open. Oh, immediate pull by Wayman on the SCVs. That's great. He's still getting a few of them down there. Let's see how many he's gonna get down here. He has three SCVs down. One Marine's gonna go down there. Another Marine's gonna go down. And now he's gonna come in for the uh, other SCVs, but it looks like we have a bunker there and that's gonna, that's gonna push that Oracle back. And he's going he's gonna to just bypass that SCV, and he's actually going to uh, run out of energy there. Now, we do have a Marine that's been able to run around, catch the Stargate, and he's going to start picking it down. Now, the Oracle has to activate that ability, and without that energy, there's nothing he can do. That Marine can just peg away at that Stargate. Now, it is an unupgraded Marine at this point. That's going to take a long time, and we'll see how that goes. 
but it's basically free shooting at this point. That Oracle can't do anything yet. Now, if we do kind of take a second and look at the map vision as this Oracle is going to come in over the top, uh, activates and takes out that one Marine saving the building. Now, it'll be a question of whether or not he uses that building again or if he just killed the Marine to kill the Marine. He probably could have used that energy to kill more SUVs if he wanted to. We do have the um, the Nexus down for the uh, Protoss player, so it was a one Oracle expand. And it looks like we have a small lead in um, in probes for uh, the, as far as the worker count for Lusang there. He does have the um, the council down while the Oracle... Oh, the Oracle goes in and gets shot down by the mine. Not even a chance. One shot and that Widow Mine takes him out. We do have the Reaper now coming in to try to take out that Stargate where that Marine here fell. We do have the Council down inside uh, the Protoss base and he's also going for a Forge to start those upgrades. You can be incredibly greedy now when playing against Terran as a Protoss player because of that Mothership Core. The Mothership Core gives you a lot of ability to just kind of like go upgrades and attack and the only thing Terran can do is try to sneak in behind you with a, a tricky little widow mine plays that Reaper gets away doesn't end doing anything the stalker takes care of everything um, I would be I yeah there goes the robo I would actually be surprised if he doesn't go for either Colossus tech or Templar uh, tech directly after this. Just get that AoE. It's really hard for Protoss players to handle Metavax, which is what's coming out now, if they don't have some sort of AoE because the DPS for the um, the Protoss gateway units isn't actually as much as the healing per second as the coming from the Metavax. So you either need to feedback them and get that energy off the Metavax to incredible force field, which always, that the basically equalizes every single fight or you need to have some sort of AOE. Now look at the map vision here. We have the entire left channel going from the Protoss base up to where his Stargate is is completely visible. Plus he has hallucinations flying around the map to check those expansions. He has the first, the watchtower closest to him and he has a unit going down towards his expansion here to take his third it looks like. But, no, I'm sorry, that's the Terran unit. He's going to plant a Widow Mine there. That's going to be a little bit of a trap. We'll see if that works out for him here. The Reaper's coming in to poke in, just checking the Watchtower and going back. That's really good. Keep those Reapers active. We want to have as much use out of him as possible. Now the Probe is coming down here all alone. There's no vision here. He's going to come in. He's going to try to plant the Nexus, but there's a Mine there. Ammo. He's gone. Dead. Now what we have is we have... Looks like a drop coming down into the main from the other side. We have the Reaper going around to try to take care of that Stargate again. And we have the Stalker moving out to kind of take care of that Reaper. Um, we also have the army trying to move down to take care of the Widowmine. Now the drop goes down in the main. Meanwhile, the Reaper's getting microed against that Stalker. And the drop's being left all alone. It's not doing anything. Those The units, the Widowmine's dropped out, just sat there. So it looks like the drop's taken out. That Reaper refuses to die. It is now gone against Stalkers twice and has lived. It's gone into the main base of the Protoss twice and lived. We have Storm coming out for a Storm and Blink. Charge is already done and we're on second weapon upgrade for the Protoss as they're taking the third base. For the Terran players we're getting all of our upgrades also. We're getting Stim, we're getting a combat shield, so a little bit health for those uh, Marines that get really thin as there's AoE coming out. We're getting the, our, the weapon upgrades and we're getting in more factories it looks like in barracks. Now we do have a bunch of medevacs out. Now for these We'll take a quick look at the vision here again. We have the army for the Protoss player up in the uh, top of the map. We have the Watchtower in the lower map and the Stargate covering. We have all the entire bottom covered and we have uh, pylons on the right side covered. But that's great vision. He sees everything that's going on, but we're going into an engagement here. And we do have a couple storms. That, oh, they're going to be picked off, but those are amazing storms. The entire army there has dropped down to red. And this army is going to get pushed back. Now, he goes all the way back to his bunker there. Now the Protoss player is going to back out and wait for the Mothership Core to come because the Mothership Core with the time warps it makes it extremely efficient. We do have some good upgrades coming down for the Terran player. Also he has concussion shell and armor at this point and we do have still the weapon upgrade coming and we have a Dark Shrine coming down and also he started armor for this one. So we have some Archons warping him because he needs to get that uh, DPS up and there we go. It's a time warp. Not a great time warp. Missed half the army and it looks like the army even though it's a bad force field also and he's going to get his army all the way back to that bunker and push the push the Protoss back. Now the question is can he get through that to get to the mothership core and it looks like we're going in for another p push here. Another time warp comes down and that time warp's perfect. Those arms, that entire bio army is stuck there. 
So it looks like the Archon and the Stalkers are going to take this out, but here come some reinforcements, and they're going to go against the Zealots there, but there's just not that much bio left. There's only one Sentry, though. We have one Sentry and one Mothership Core with no energy left on it. So it looks like the Terran player is going to back out. Oh, no, he's going to come back, but he still only has one Sentry and the Powerless Mothership Core. I'm not sure this is a really good engagement. He was actually winning as far as the units lost there, but... There's not a whole lot he can do now. He, the gateway units are not going to do very well against the um, Marine Marauder and Medivac. And he only has the one arc on there. It does warp in some DTs, though. Another kind of troublesome uh, force field that gets uh, popped by the Archon instantly. The Medivacs pick up and they drop out, but they're going to go after the Mothership Core and kill it. Now, that Mothership Core didn't have any energy, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Now, the Protoss player is still ahead, but he's running out of units. He only has that one sentry. Looks like we're going to have another engagement. Great micro by the Terran player. The Terran player is pushing forward again now, and it looks like, oh, there he goes, picking slices of the army out and microwing them back to kind of give that efficiency to those Terran uh, units that are really thin and if they die fast if you don't micro them yeah the hardest part about being playing Terran is you have to be very active with your units that micro is what makes your units efficient and perfectly there we look the Protoss player is now completely behind uh, over 2,000 resources lost there that was a horrible engagement for him now, we still want to take a look here and check out the vision. We do see the vision for the Terran player kind of poking out with his army, but still that watchtower is being held by that um, soccer. Now, we can look and there are uh, ghosts coming down. We have both ghost upgrades coming down. So personal cloaking and also the power upgrade so that they come out with more power. And meanwhile, we have some immortals coming out on the uh, Protoss side, but I don't know if they're going to be super helpful. We don't see a whole lot of uh, mech items. Uh, Marauders, I suppose, but really he should be going for um, Colossi at this point. He needs AoE for this army. And, but we do have great vision here still for the Protoss player, even as the Terran player is pushing forward those pylons he's placed in front. And we do have harassment in the Terran main and the Terran natural there, but also the Terran army is pushing down. So there were Warpins, uh, sorry, their reinforcements of Terran were taking care of that up in the north end. But down here in the south, that army's getting in the corner, and here come the ghost. I mean, sorry, the Templar, and they storm, and the, all of the army gets picked up into the medevacs, and the feedbacks go down. Now, he fed, fed back like two medevacs, like three times there, so he missed the important one. The one with the units, he never fed back. That would have been the one he wanted to go for. So slight miss micro there, but still great awareness of going. He took a little bit too long to get that Templar there to get that storm down, but when he did, it was a perfect storm. And then when it was picked up, he started feedbacking the medevacs. That's exactly what you want to do. Let those stalkers pick them off. Unfortunately, he fed back the same one a couple times because as it, when you feed back, if you click on it again, it has like one energy, it'll take away like one life. Now, we still have the upgrades coming down. He's getting the plus one uh, vehicle weapon upgrade, which I'm not totally sure what he'll end up using that for. We do have finally the Colossus Bay coming down, and this is going to allow him to get that AoE out. The storms are great, but you really need to, especially as ghosts come out, you need to diversify him. Uh, Colossi are perfect against ghosts. They outrange them. If you can, if you are getting observers with the army, then you get that. Now look at the vision here. He has a small group of army coming up to the Terran third. Meanwhile, he still has that Stargate, which is uh, showing him where the army is because the army's taking out that Stargate. He also has the Watchtower, plus he has all three of his bases and a little bit of his army out in front of that, so he has vision there too. Now we do have a medevac coming down into the the main, but it looks like this harassment's going to take a lot of workers down with it. We have two Zealots and a Dark Templar taking out just probe after probe, but here comes the army, and it looks like they're going to be able to clean that up. Now, on the other side, we do have the Terran army dropping there, and it looks like the DC is the last one going out there, and we have some ghosts coming in. They take that out. Now we go back to the medevac drop here, and the Marines are finally taken out by the Zealots there, and we just have the medevac sitting. Now, the army actually is pushing down on the left side of the map right now. They haven't done a whole lot of damage. They're just getting positioned. And we do see he's going to send a Dark Templar in after them. The army's going to pull back to try to take that Watchtower. Now, that Stalker has been there basically the whole time watching everything. We have this Observer here also getting great vision. Again, just wonderful vision. And finally, the Stalker's going to die, and the Terran player's going to take control of the mid at this point. Now, we still have upgrades coming down. We're at plus three weapons for the Protoss player. We have shields and armor coming down at this point. Um, we still have ghosts coming out in large quantities for the Terran player. Um, he's still basically sticking on medevacs and his army with a uh, ghost built in. 
Now, we do have a Dark Templar chasing back the army here, and again, great vision. The Protoss player with that Dark Templar knows exactly where the army is and gets free swipes on it. Um, now, the mid game here, or as we're going kind of pushing towards the late game at this point, we have the Colossi coming out and we have the Storm coming up. There's an interesting choice here. He's throwing down a Stargate in his main also. And meanwhile, on the Terran side, we're sticking with what's working. We're going with our standard army. We have our marine uh, medevacs and marauders, and we're going for those ghosts and vikings, and we want to be able to counter all those. He hasn't had any vikings out yet, as far as I know, but as when he sees the Colossi, he already has the starport that's been pumping out medevacs, so he's going to be able to do that. Now we have two BTs pushing out. We have both watchtowers taken at this point. And he has four bases going down. So again, the vision is amazing. We have one DT taken out, but it wastes a scan. So there's some free money for the Protoss player. And this is a great harassment coming in from the DT. There is a tower there, so he can be seen. But there's no Marines there in that bunker. That bunker is empty. And it looks like he's going to chase these down. And the Marines are going to run for the bunker there to try to get in. And he's going to he's going to hold position right in front of the gas guys. And now he can be seen. He can't be hit by those Marines in that bunker, but they can see him because of that watchtower. But this is great. He's just wasting enormous amounts of time here. This is wonderful. That's a great, great tactic. People should take that from this game. Now, we do have the Protoss army sitting here in kind of a horrible position in this little gap that I was talking about earlier, but their vision is amazing. He has over half of the map right now with vision. While he's taking his force, he was able to push on the pressure with that DT while taking that force. Meanwhile, the Terran player already has his force down. He's throwing down detection because we know DTs are a problem. And we are getting nuclear missiles <laughs> which which is just you don't see every day but when you do see them they basically that's what you take from the game you're like what was that game oh that was the game with the nuclear missiles in it so we still have a great amount of vision here and these zealots are going to take both of these marines that are coming out to take those watchtowers they're going to take them out now the army is going to come out and take this top watchtower but Again, the Protoss player knows where it is, and he's moving his army off to the left side here. Now we have the armies on split sides. The Terran player can push down into the fourth of the Protoss, but the Protoss can also counterattack into the fourth of the Terran player. And it looks like we have a nuclear missile coming down. Now, I do me a favor. Everybody put your headphones on and turn your volume up really loud. I'm not even going to talk. Just listen. Yeah, that's a lovely... <laughs> That is an amazing sound. We don't see it every day, so just enjoy it. Now we do have, oh, the probes are getting out there. So there's another one coming down. It's not going to have that much effect. We do have some DTs in the main base of the, uh, of, the pro, of the Terran player right now, and he's just been going at it uncontested. He's up here. He's already cleared out all of the workers here. We do have the Vikings coming out now, which we've seen. We're already up to four there. And here comes the army, and they're going to waste another scan to take out that DT. That's great. We can see that there are more... Um, more nuclear missiles being made at this point, plus another Ghost Academy so we can get more. Meanwhile, we're going to warp Prism out on the Protoss side zone. There's a horrible engagement. Where you have there is the Terran player up on a cliff just shooting down at a Protoss player getting no shots at all. He got maybe one volley there from his uh, Colossi and the Vikings are going to just take it out there in a great position. Here come the ghosts, but the ghosts are getting taken out by the, the <laughs> I'm sorry, the Templar being taken out by the ghosts. They do get a couple really good storms there. That entire army gets hit by that storm. But there's just not enough of the Protoss player here after the, the units just all died in that horrible engagement. That was awful. That's the importance of not walking your units through a, a weird choke point like that or next to a cliff. They just got an enormous amount of shots off them from just unseen uh, Terran units from the top. Now we do have carriers coming out and more Stargates, which is weird. It, he probably should be going for more Colossi, but you know what? Carriers are fun. So, you know, you're going nuclear with nuclear missiles. We're going to go carriers. We do have a zealot. Again, great vision. Just a single unit out there. Now, we do have vision of the army also because we still have this watchtower. But there's just an enormous amount of ghosts here. That's a, that's a lot of ghosts. And uh, we do have a DT there. The DT is going to be coming and taking out some swipes here. But we also have a nuclear bomb going down again on the Protoss fourth base. And it looks like that one's going to land. I'm not sure that's going to do a whole lot of damage. We do have the army coming into the fourth also. And there goes the nuclear on the fourth almost, and the army's coming in the third. And we do have a nuclear weapon going down on the ramp there to try to zone out the army. Now, it's too bad he couldn't get it actually on the ramp, but that's a pretty good spot. I'm not sure it's going to hit anything super large there. It does a little bit of damage, and the ghosts run into entire uh, cannon lines, so they're going to get pushed back. 
Now there's a great split right there. That was a wonderful split. Get those armies spread out. That AoE will do a little bit less. We do have um, the ghost on the other side taken out there. Now, it does look like Wayman, the Terran player, is going to pull back, and Lee Sang still just has a great vision of the map. He's going to see this army moving out past us. He still has um, basically the entire bottom right of the map covered. He has an observer up over the top watchtower, so he can see that also. He has a proton, oh, I'm sorry, a pylon on the top right um, expansion. It's great, and he has a bunch of carriers and a void ray coming up. Still, he only has one one single carrier at this point, so we'll see how this goes, because it looks like the Terran army is going to push through the mid here, while the Protoss army is going to try to come up behind it and pin it between it, the army and the fourth base. But it looks like the Terran army is going to get in there to the fourth base first. We do have a couple units getting picked off here. And there's some Zelt, and we do have a nuclear missile coming down right in between the armies. And it looks like another one going to come down right on top of the fourth base, but we have some DTs coming in. I don't think there's any detection here, and there's not. They're going to swipe that one and take care of it. The other missile is going to come down right on top of the army. It looks like all the ghosts are in the range of just EMPing everything. They blanket EMPs. They're going to hit the Templar there also just... Oh, no! And the missile takes out all of the AoE, and that's the game. Lesang just knew it was over at that point. He had nothing left but gateway units and a single carrier. Ghosts for the win. GG. Okay, now as we're stepping out of the game there, what we take away instantly from that game is how cool nuclear fucking missiles are. They just basically take care of an entire army in one shot, if you can land them. But that's not actually what won Wyman in the game. What won him in the game was his great army trades and his great positioning for those battles. Having it be on the high ground while the Protoss army walks under a cliff and he gets free pot shots off with his Vikings and his army, that's great. That's what won him the game. But for the lower league players and the newer players, the concept I want you to take from this game is actually none of those. What I want you to do is I want you to take the Protoss's map vision from this. He constantly went for the watchtowers, constantly had pylons up around the map, and was able to do pushes in with just single units like Dark Templars or Zealots and constantly get a feel of where the army was and get a feel for what expansions were taken and how many workers were on them. He constantly knew what was over 50% of that map. He was able to deal with drops effectively and did much more damage to Wyman's uh, forces as far as harassing. So that's what I want you to take from there. Take as much of the map as you can. Be bold. Take those watchtowers. You can keep your army back. Just push out, take the watchtower, leave a unit there, a hurt stalker, a zealot. Those work fine. If you do have BTs, push out around the map. See what you can find. You never know when you'll find just random army units standing around. We saw those two ghosts get taken out by the um, by the Dark Templars when they were trying to nuke the fourth base for the Protoss. So that's what I want you to take from there. Feel, feel free to go out and play some games, send me those replays so I can take a look at them, and then we can even cast some of those or even do a compare and contrast if you actually send me one from before you started doing this. Now, as far as everybody else that doesn't want to send me replays, that's fine. It's cool. Would you please do me a favor though? Like and subscribe to this video, and down below is my Twitter and Facebook. Follow me on those. Anybody who follows me on Twitter, I instantly follow back. So, a follower for you, a follower for me. It works out that way. Anyways, you guys go out, play some games now, and have fun. I'll see you next time.